There were several new models of motorcycles that I was really excited to try in the year 2021. And yes, most of them are big bikes from the well-known premium brands. But there is this one bike designed by Italians for a brand from China. A brand that has been going full throttle in terms of growth in the Philippines. CF Moto is one of the most searched for brands on motodeal.com.ph, specifically for the 400NK. What we have here is a bike that could probably dethrone its smaller stablemate. This is the CF Moto 700 CLX Heritage. It's time to go beyond the ride. I remember when I first saw the photos of this bike when they released it from ICMA 2019. And I remember contacting the distributors in the Philippines, Motostrada, right away and asking them when the bikes were arriving in the country because I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. I can't believe I'm actually sitting in it right now. It's got the neo retro styling that I absolutely love. And at a glance, it kind of reminds me of the Ducati Scrambler Icon meets Honda CB650R type of look to it, which honestly is a really good thing. The LED headlight not only works well and in my opinion looks amazing, but it also has a self-adapted assist system, which can turn on or off depending on the brightness of where you are. And the turn signals are self-canceling, which honestly is a lot more useful than you think. I also love that they decided to tidy the tail for you right out of the showroom. If you look closely, you'll notice that the bike is very well put together. From the grips, to the switches, to the adjustable levers, everything feels premium. And if you look up close at the tank, it's not one piece. It's integrated into the frame. The 700 CLX Heritage is powered by a 693cc double overhead cam liquid-cooled parallel twin that makes 73.75 horsepower and 68 newton meters of torque. It's got a six-speed manual transmission with a slipper clutch. Stopping power is provided by J. Juan brakes with ABS for the front and the rear. It has aluminum alloy wheels that look similar to spoke wheels. The front tire, 18-inch, 110 by 80, Pirelli MT60. Meanwhile, the rear is a 17-inch, 180 by 55, Pirelli MT60. I do wish that the front tire was a little bit thicker. It's a little bit too slim for my taste. Keeping bumps at bay, 41mm KYB upside down front forks and an adjustable KYB single rear shock. It's got loads of tech, including cruise control. Seriously, for its class. Cruise control, are you kidding me? LED lights all around, all digital gauge cluster, which is pretty decent. It's got everything you need except for fuel economy. There's also a USB port, which we all know is very useful. However, it's got hidden. And when I say hidden, I mean it's underneath the seat. It's got two riding modes, eco and sport. Of course, we keep it in sport. The tank can hold a decent 13 liters of fuel, and you can get about 20 kilometers per liter in the city on the highway that goes up to 25 kilometers per liter in sport mode. That's pretty good. It's got a curb weight of 196 kilograms, which isn't so bad, and a seat height of 800 millimeters. I am five foot six. And that is the situation. Now, it is a little bit wide, so that's why your legs are kind of spread out a little bit. Of course, it depends on your inseam. Now, something that you may have to get used to is where the foot pegs are. If you notice, it's, that is not the position you want to be in. So around here would be more ideal, and it does retract. Let's do a quick sound test. Not bad. Nice baritone of a parallel twin.
Sitting in the saddle, the seat is kind of wide, but a lot more stiff than it looks like. It looks a lot softer than it is. The seating position, it's very neutral. It's very upright. It's actually my preferred ergonomics. The center controls, the handlebars are nice and high. This is the way I like to sit when I'm on a motorcycle. The power delivery is pretty damn good. Compared to the 650 NK, the 700 CLX has more grunt in the mid-range and also a little bit more at the top end. There's so much that you only really need to clutch out and not rev it to get going. Now it does get a little warm in city riding, but not excessively, not too much that it would really, really bother you. But there is some sort of discomfort when you're stuck in bad traffic. Now the weight is a little bit on the heavier side if you're a beginner rider. If you're an intermediate rider, let's say you've been riding for maybe about a year, I think the weight should be okay. But it's not so bad because the seat height isn't very high, so you can probably flat foot the bike and still have confidence when you're riding it. The front brake works really well. The rear brake, mm, I think it needs a little bit of work or maybe I'm just not used to it. It could be a little bit of a adjustment period, but it's, I prefer something with a little bit more bite. Now we took the bike out on the twisties and the engine delivery power is nice and smooth. You can exit corners rather quickly and the bike does like to lean a lot more than I thought it would, even on dual sport tires. The bike is very manageable in city traffic. Now, I did say that it does get a little warm when you're stuck in bad traffic, but you can still manage to filter rather easily. I think because it's not so high, it's not extremely heavy, you do feel confident when you're filtering through traffic and get to the front of the stoplight. Riding on the expressway, it's a lot more stable than I thought it would be. There's presence you feel a little bit more significant i thought it was going to be too light i thought i would be thrown around by the, by the wind and feel a little uncomfortable but it's not it actually feels rather solid on the expressway the bike feels really planted i think the bike is friendly enough for a beginner rider or maybe somebody who's been riding like scooters or smaller displacement motorcycles this is a nice step up motorcycle to the middleweight category. The price of this bike is very close to that of a bike that I absolutely love, the Royal Enfield Interceptor. Although I don't think it's a direct competitor, except that both bikes are in the 600 to 700 cc range. They are basically almost the same price. Uh, and they're both easy to use for beginners. And I think the difference is, of course, the RE is a classic. This is a Neo Retro. The RE is very bare bones. There's, it's basically the, as, as basic as, as a motorcycle can be. This bike has all the bells and whistles. It's got everything. I mean, cruise control. Are you kidding me? This bike has cruise control. For its class, for its price range, that's almost unheard of. Now, some people may wonder, how is the after sales service? Honestly, it might still be a little too early to tell. But keep in mind, Motostrada, who distributes the CF Moto brand, as well as MV Agusta, one of the most premium motorcycle brands in the world. And they don't just award that to a company who can't provide good after-sales service. So theoretically, the service of CF Motos should be okay. I'm actually really enjoying this bike. I'm trying to find things to complain about. I'm trying to find things to nitpick about this motorcycle and I'm having a hard time finding something that's to complain about. I mean, considering what I thought this bike would be, this has kind of exceeded some of my expectations. It's a lot better than I thought it would be. It feels, well, it, it feels a little bit more premium than I thought it would feel like. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I really am. I've been a fan of the CF Moto brand since I tried out the NK series. And before we got this bike, I was thinking to myself, I'm sure it's gonna be good because of its price. But I was wrong. It's a good bike, period, full stop. It rides well, it looks good, it feels substantial, and it's got a lot more tech than anything in its price range. And the bike 
can be yours for a price tag of 369,800 Philippine pesos. That, my friends, is a good deal. For more information about this bag and other MCs out there, log on to www.motodeal.com.ph. This has been Gene Rufino for Beyond the Ride. Thank you.